Let's not waste any time and get right on with what's new in horror in comic books, August 17th, 2022. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Here's what's new this week in comic book horror, August 17th, 2022. Disturbed, Dark Messiah, number three, is from Opus Comics. The story is by Tim Seeley, with art by Alex Medellin McCain and Isaac Escorza. Tim Seeley adapts a post-apocalyptic tale about the loss of free will and the will to survive and be heard. With all of the monstrous images and intense action the rock band Disturbed can come up with. Lady Hell, number one, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Eric Burnham, with art by Zengis Tazbolatov. 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 This series answers the question of what happens to the goddess of death, Lady Hell, after she was booted from her throne by purgatory. Now begins the long climb to retain what is rightfully hers. I love the design of Lady Hell. I understand that basically this is just a clone of Lady Death, which Dynamite can't use because Brian Polito retained the rights to her. But still, the look of that Lady Hell is pretty damn cool. Ass, ass, titties. Couldn't help myself. Nita Hawes, Nightmare Blog, number seven, is from Image Comics. The story is by Rodney Barnes, with art by Simon Kudransky. Paranormal investigator Nita Hawes works on solving a cold case from the 1700s that has strange ties to a present-day evil in this spin-off to the hit series, Philadelphia. Hard Eyes, number one, is from Vault Comics. The story is by Dennis Hopeless with art by Victor Ibanez. This new series tells a tale of young love at the end of the world as monsters that eat sanity have taken over civilization. But that won't stop a pair of kids from falling in love with each other. But what if one of those survivors isn't being completely honest, and how does that tie into the monsters they're hiding from? Find out in this new horror series from Vault, a company that has birthed quite a few solid horror titles of late. Tales from Harrow County, Lost Ones, number four, is from Dark Horse Comics. The story is by Colin Bunn, with art by Emily Schnall. Colin Bunn returns to Harrow County, writing a story about a country girl, now powerless, who must use her wits to take on her supernatural city cousins. Sounds like a retelling of the old country mouse, city mouse tale, with a supernatural twist. Madballs vs. Garbage Pail Kids, number two, is from Dynamite Entertainment, the story is by Sholly Fish, with art by Jason Crosby. If you were a kid in the late 80s, you had at least one Mad Ball and collected Garbage Pail Kids. It's just what you did. I think I had an entire collection of every Garbage Pail Kid card back then, and still have it gathering dust somewhere in the closet. There's something about the level of fun grossness these novelties achieved, and this series celebrates all of the gross, the gore, and the just plain wrong in all of its glory. Bloodstained Teeth, number five, is from Image Comics. The story is by Christian Ward, with art by Patrick Reynolds. Our swarthy lead, Atticus Stone, is out to take out a movie star who wants to become a vampire. Of course, Stone has to get to the starlet before the other vamps get to him, and it all happens on the premiere night of her new movie. Intense and unconventional vampire action can be found right here in this series. Scooby-Doo, Where Are You?, number 117, is from DC Comics. The story is by Ivan Cohen, with art by Valerio Ciola. Scoob and the gang help out a TV chef whose show is being tormented by a hungry Bigfoot. Me being a lover of all things Sasquatchonian means I'll be all over this issue, which is a gateway horror comic book for the kids. Army of Darkness vs. Reanimator, Necronomicon Rising, number 2, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Eric Burnham, with art by Iman Casalos. 
Herbert West has paired up with Bad Ash to delve into the secrets of the Necronomicon. Of course, Good Ash is the only one standing in their way in this body and over the top horror mashup. Chilling Adventures presents Jinx's Grim Fairy Tales, number one, is from Archie Comics. The story is by Magdalene Visaggio, Joe Corallo, and James III, with art by Craig Cermak, Ava Cabrera, and Evan Stanley. This really is a cool setup for a horror anthology. It's about Riverdale's best babysitter, Jinx, and a magic fairy tale book she uses to tell the kids she sits extremely twisted versions of your favorite fables. Archie has been one of the leaders in comic book's horror resurgence, and this one looks to be another good one. The Walking Dead Deluxe, number 45, is from Image Comics. The story is by Robert Kirkman, with art by Charlie Adlard. Tyrese and Michonne go into stealth mode and try to catch the governor and his troops unaware, while said governor is leading a full-scale war, pinning Rick and the rest down in the prison. All brought to you in gory color for the first time in this deluxe reprinting of this epic series. The Brother of All Men, number two, is from Aftershock Comics. The story is by Zach Thompson, with art by Eoin Merritt. I really loved the first issue of this series, which follows a private investigator looking for his own brother in a cult-like settlement in the middle of the Canadian woods. This one is dripping with atmospheric folk horror, and I really dig it. DC vs. Vampires All Out War number 2 is from DC Comics. The story is by Matt Rosenberg, Alex Pacnadel, and Emma Vicelli, with art by Pascal Calano and Haining. I love the eclectic cast of badasses gathered to battle the never-ending onslaught of vampires in this issue. It looks like Deathstroke, Azrael, John Constantine, Midnighter, and Talia al Ghul must put their differences aside in order to fight back against an army of bloodsuckers. This is hardcore action horror, putting some of your favorite heroes into situations that is definitely not for the faint of heart. Canary number 2 is from Comixology. The story is by Scott Snyder, with art by Dan Pinozian. While the series didn't stay in the Old West for long, American Vampire's Old West era rocked, which means Scott Snyder knows how to write a horror western. Here's a new one. I have yet to check it out, but it's got ominous covers, a great artist in Dan Panosian, and of course, Snyder's diabolical touch. Promethe 1313, number two, is from Ablaze. The story is by Andy Diggle, with art by Sean Martinbro. I still need to check out the first issue of this one, but man, with this stellar lineup of creative minds behind it, it's bound to be amazing. I've loved Diggle's work since he wrote The Losers way back in the day, and Martin Burrow's art is to die for. This comic promises to be a sci-fi, horror, psychological mind scrog, and I can't wait to read it. Finally, The Silver Coin, number 13, is from Image Comics. The story is by Johnny Christmas, with art by Michael Walsh. Superstar artist Johnny Christmas takes on the writing detail for this always stellar horror anthology as we find out just what went on with the coin during New Year's Eve 1999 when fears of Y2K were at their highest. This series never fails to entertain and quench my more wicked tastes. That's it for this week's haul. I'll be picking up a bunch of these titles this week, including The Silver Coin, Promethe 1313, the Brother of All Men, Scooby-Doo, and maybe Lady Hell and Hard Eyes. How's about you? Let me know which ones you're planning on getting down in the comments. Stuck inside your